FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. And well, we've been talking with Keith Newmeyer, and he is chairman of First Mining Finance and been talking with them for a while. If you're interested, just go to their website, firstminingfinance.com. All the info is there. Uh, As far as symbols go on the uh, TSXV, it's FF. On the uh, OTCQX, it's FFMGF, Frankfurt FMG. Keith, uh, welcome back. Well, thanks a lot, Harry. Good chatting again. Hey, likewise. So, you know, I've been reading the uh, media coverage of the company and, you know, talking with you, something's up here. There's uh, There's been new opportunities identified and and the company uh, being being a small company, lean and efficient, you're, you're moving to take advantage of these opportunities. Yeah, well, you know, that's uh, that's why I created, you know, First Mining Finance to take advantage of the, you know, the malaise that existed in the mining sector, you know, between, you know, 2013, 2014, 2015. And I got First Mining Finance public in April of 2015 and set on a very aggressive uh, campaign of acquisitions. You know, my team of technical people uh, uh, um, reviewed, you know, many of the great assets that had been developed over the previous couple of decades owned by their mining companies that were in financial difficulty due to the collapse in the sector. And uh, we went on a campaign and bought eight companies in a period of about 13 or 14 months and uh, built up a portfolio of 25 projects, um, of which a good handful of them are in, you know, mining friendly Eastern Canada, Quebec and Ontario and Newfoundland um, contain, you know, somewhere around 13 you know, million ounces. Uh, um, but, you know, that's that's only 43 101, 101 compliant ounces is actually what we think there's they're understated. And, uh, uh, you know, back in the days when I was putting together the portfolio, it was cheaper to buy ounces uh, than it would be to drill for an ounce. Well, that has now changed. It's now cheaper to drill for an ounce than to buy an ounce. And uh, we now can, you know, basically change the business strategy of First Mining Finance from just a buyer of assets and a holder of assets to an actual a developer of assets by drilling uh, uh, these projects out and, and defining additional ounces that we think exists and over time de-risking them by, you know, getting permits in place, by building roads and, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure and so on in order to hopefully eventually turn these projects into producing mines sometime in the you know next several years. So kind of spent your career identifying anomalies in the marketplace where you can buy assets at one price, either develop them or sell them at another. And as you said, uh, quoting you from a while back, a perfect storm occurred creating ridiculous valuations that prevented many juniors from financing and continuing on their own. Now, here you are, the landscape has changed yet again, and your strategy from before fits in perfectly with your current strategy. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, I've learned to be able to be flexible when, when operating a business. And, uh, you know, we have to you know, if the if the market um, you know is, is suggesting one thing, I think you know good management you know should be listening to the the, the forces of the market and to be able to move the business accordingly. And uh, that's I've been successful you know by building my predecessor companies uh, you know first Quantum Minerals and then later First Majestic Silver, which I'm still the CEO and president of, and um, you know then putting together First Mining Finance, which I'm the chairman of. So it's a very important part of my strategy, and then something that I'll continue to do you know going forward. Yeah. Well, it's just interesting the way the landscape changes. Uh, Is first mining still in the market for acquisitions if the right one comes along? Oh, you can never stop looking, um, you know, just, just because values have, have gone up substantially in the last couple of years. There's still interesting stuff out there. And, um, you know, there, you know, I'd have to admit to you, there's things that we're looking at even today. But, um, you know, whether a transaction occurs or not, it's, it's hard to say. It's got to be best, you know, uh, a marriage of partners in a way, you know, it's, it's got to be good for the buyer and the seller. And, and it is more difficult in this current environment to do deals. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can never stop looking. So, so you 
you're kind of in the di- digestion phase right now. You did all of these acquisitions in a record period of time. Never heard of any company doing, especially one that size, doing that many acquisitions in that short a period of time, a little more than a year. Literally, you didn't stop moving. And now it's, okay, other opportunities, new strategies opened up, and now we're going to make the most of it. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And I think we did a heck of a job. And, and I don't know of any other company in the world. And you just said it. And I, I'd agree with you that, you know, we was able to buy, you know, eight, eight companies in a matter of 13 months. I think it's unheard of. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, we are extremely aggressive and we're extremely successful in the business plan. And now it's time to develop the assets that we, we acquired. And, you know, these things take time. It, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's, uh, it takes time to build a big company and, you know, you have to take a long term view on these things and I do uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I bought some stock just last week at, at uh, what I consider pretty cheap prices. And, you know, but I'm looking two, three, four, five years out when, when I think the, the you know, the, the, the real benefits of the work we're going to do that we're doing today are going to really start to pay off. Yeah. So your other companies that you've been involved in building, uh, First Quantum and First Majestic, had to have been exciting. But is there something more exciting about this, what you're doing now? You know, I love building companies. So it's, it's, uh, uh, no, I wouldn't say uh, it's 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 a more or less exciting. Uh, you know, my my role at First Majestic is very much an administrator. Uh, uh, you know, it's a big company, and 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 uh, you know, where our acquisition strategy is quite a bit different than it would be for First uh, My uh, Finance, for example. So, um, you know, we're we're First Majestic's extremely focused on, on silver in Mexico. You know, which has limited opportunities because you know silver mines are pretty rare animals. So, sure. you know, the the acquisitions uh, strategy there, as I said, is much different. So, First My Finance has a much broader mandate. Um, you know, it's it's uh, North and South America, and so it's a Western Hemisphere based. So um, primarily gold, mind you, you know, we, we like gold a lot, but, you know, we'll look at copper projects. We'll look at, you know, other projects if, if they meet our criteria. So, you know, the, 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 the stuff that, uh, you know, we can look at at First Money Finance is, is, uh, is, is much broader, as I said. Sure. So the price of gold looked like it was going to break through 1300 It was having a great day uh, last week. And then all of a sudden, boom, in one day, it's down 7 $8 an ounce. And now, you know, we're in the the 1240s uh, a little disconcerting I love it. I, I just went and bought some gold today. So uh, uh, every June I, I buy um, uh, gold and silver. I buy my physical uh, metal uh, each June. I've been doing this for over a decade now. And uh, the reason I picked June is because if you look on a 30-year chart, um, uh, gold and silver generally hit their lows of the year in June. Um, it didn't happen in 2016, mind you. 2016 was a bit of an unusual year. But uh, if you go back over the over the last 30 years, you'll see that June June is normally a low period. And I, I bought um, my first ever monster box uh, of uh, <laughs> uh, silver coins, uh, maple leaves, uh, about three weeks ago, and silver was at 16.30 an ounce. And I was a happy buyer of 500 one ounce coins. Um, my first ever monster box, as I said, I've, uh, and I just bought some gold uh, coins today. I would planned on buying them this week. Or, uh, I'd made the plan a couple of weeks ago to buy them this week, but um, I've been out of town traveling. And then, uh, uh, you know, it was nice to see the, the price of the metal come down 50 bucks over the last couple of weeks and give me the opportunity to get my gold even cheaper. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I'm not worried at all about it. Um, uh, you know, the equities, obviously, you know, the stocks um, are obviously very much affected by the swings in the metal prices. And, and, and uh, you know, which is, you know, I think is a, a little bit of nonsense, quite frankly. I, I, but, you know, that's where people, you know, they trade these stocks based on what the stock, what, what the metal is doing, you know, on that particular day. And then it does create the volatility in, in, in the space. And But I'm a bull on the metal, you know, or, or both on gold and silver. I think we're at the beginning of a new bull market that's probably about a year in and uh, you know these bull markets generally go you know from three to four or five years and this last one actually lasted 10 years from 2002 to 2012 when silver went up from five bucks to 50 bucks and gold went from 250 bucks to 1900 bucks so you know if, they, if those um, uh, types of moves hold which I think they will you know that's a, a 10 times move from you know let's say the low of 1330 or 1350 in January of 2016 you know going up uh, 10 times you know those are some pretty nice uh, for, uh, price is for both silver and gold. So uh, that's what I'm looking at for over the next you know, three to five years. And I'll be surprised if uh, those, those prices aren't uh, 
not aren't hit. Yeah, well, you look at all the geopolitical uncertainties in the world, the economic issues that are intractable, the nonstop money printing, the structural unemployment. Now you have car sales peaking. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things that really favor precious metals at this point in the economic cycle. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in silver, quite frankly, is uh, is just the fundamentals are outstanding. And, and uh, I'm, I'm still, it baffles me to look at the price of the metal, where it's trading, you know, $16.50. It's just like, it's shocking. You know, we're, we're mining nine to one on a global scale for every one ounce of gold. We're mining nine ounces of silver and for us to be trading at 73 to one. Absolutely makes no sense to me. So, you know, I, I think if, you know, obviously people are familiar with gold and, you know, people hold gold, you know, being for the fact that it's a currency and, um, and, and you know, a hedge against whatever, you know, the, 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 the problems around the world. So, there, you know, there's a reasons why we all have gold in our portfolio. But, you know, those people that don't don't understand silver, you should really look at the fundamentals of silver because it's it's just uh, fascinating. And I think one day that, you know, we will have a severe supply problem in the silver space, which will hit the headlines and it's going to cause the collapse of the current ratio. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see triple digit silver. Yeah. And the other thing is burgeoning markets for silver. Everywhere you look, medical, in solar, electronics, it's not like the demand for the metal has gone down and there's there's really not much substitution for silver. You either got it or you don't. Yeah, no, that is very true. And, uh, um, there's no substitute for silver. It's one of our taglines and, uh, uh, you know, the, the uses are going up uh, every year and mine supplies actually dropped for the last couple of years, which is really concerning. Um, you know, supplies, more people haven't picked up on the fact that uh, mine supply is dropping and consumption is increasing and the price is static. Yeah. Yeah. And it's happened with a number of very vital, uh, vital metals, base metals, as well as silver. And like you say, uh, investment in uh, in new production is down, especially because so much of silver is byproduct from uh, other base metals, zinc or lead or copper, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so we got interesting uh, supply issues that are probably going to emerge in the future, but we got so many other things going along that uh, that probably will just be one factor that leads to silver's eventual rise, right? Well, I think so. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, who knows where gold's going to go? I'm a, a big bull on gold as well. And, and uh, you know, hence hence the creation of First Money Finance. But, um, you know, if we've got, pick a number, you know, $2,000 of gold or Three thousand dollar gold. I think both are pretty well in the cards as far as I'm concerned. And and uh, you know that three thousand dollar gold. You know you got you, you know ten to one ratio. You know it's just pretty stupid numbers on on silver. I don't yeah. even want to say the number. You know because it was, I, I know I I, I, I I already get laughed at all the time. Whenever I say triple digit silver, people laugh at me all the time. So yeah. um, if I if I said any any outrageous number people would just laugh at me more so probably best to avoid it yeah best not to make any uh, forward looking statements about the price of silver but i mean god the silver to gold ratio is today it's over 75 look when yeah. you just have to look at the chart and you see whenever whenever it goes into the 70s something always happens right something always happens mm-hmm. so no reason to think that this time will be different so Anyways, I urge anyone who's interested in the company, go take a look at the website, firstminingfinance.com. Again, the uh, symbols for the venture FF for the OTC QX FFMGF and for the Frankfurt FMG. Keith, it's always great speaking with you and uh, let's see how the new strategy works out. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Kerry. And, uh, you know, people can go to the websites on both First Majestic Silver and First Mining Finance. Uh, you know, if they need uh, additional information, just please call either company. They're, both companies have toll free numbers on the websites. And, you know, Todd Anthony at uh, First Majestic and uh, Derek Iwanaka at First Mining are always available for, for taking calls. And uh, I am I can also be followed on Twitter, you know, Keith underscore Newmeyer. That's just N E U M E Y E R. And I send out the odd tweet now and then of uh, stuff that I think is interesting to, to shareholders. Excellent. And uh, I guess your annual meeting's coming up for First Mining Finance shortly. This, yeah, a couple of days. This Thursday is our big AGM. That's right. All right. So, hey, thanks for coming on. And of course, we'll have a link for all of your companies in the show notes to this interview and wish you the best of luck. Okay. Well, thanks very much uh, again, Kerry. Have a great day. 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. And well, we've been talking with Keith Newmeyer, and he is chairman of First Mining Finance and been talking with them for a while. Hey, if you're interested, just go to their website, firstminingfinance.com. All the info is there. Uh, as far as symbols go on the uh, TSXV, it's FF. On the uh, OTCQX, it's FFMGF, Frankfurt FMG. Keith, uh, welcome back. Well, thanks a lot, Harry. Good chatting again. Hey, likewise. So, you know, I've been reading the uh, media coverage of the company and, you know, talking with you, something's up here. There's uh, There's been new opportunities identified and and the company uh, being being a small company, lean and efficient, you're, you're moving to take advantage of these opportunities. Yeah, well, you know, that's uh, that's why I created, you know, First Mining Finance to take advantage of the, you know, the malaise that existed in the mining sector, you know, between, you know, 2013, 20 in order to hopefully eventually turn these projects into producing mines sometime in the you know next several years. So kind of spent your career identifying anomalies in the marketplace where you can buy assets at one price, either develop them or sell them at another. And as you said, to uh, Quoting you from a while back, a perfect storm occurred, creating ridiculous valuations that prevented many juniors from financing and continuing on their own. Now, here you are, the landscape has changed yet again, and your strategy from before fits in perfectly with your current strategy. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, I've learned to be able to be flexible when, when operating a business, and uh, you know we have to you know, if the, if the market, um, you know, is, is suggesting one thing, I think, you know, good management, you know, should be listening to the, the, the forces of the market and to be able to move the business accordingly. And uh, that's, I've been successful, you know, by building my predecessor companies, uh, you know, first Quantum Minerals, and then later First Majestic Silver, which I'm still the CEO and president of, and, um, you know, then putting together First Mining Finance, which I'm the chairman of. So it's a very important part of my strategy and then something that I'll continue to do, you know, going forward. Yeah. Well, it's just interesting the way the landscape changes. Uh, is first mining still in the market for acquisitions if the right one comes along? Oh, you can never stop looking. Um, you know, just, just because values have, have gone up substantially in the last couple of years, there's still interesting stuff out there. And, um, you know, there, you know, I'd have to admit to you, there's things that we're looking at even today. But, um, you know, whether a transaction occurs or not, it's, it's hard to say. It's got to be best, you know, if, uh, a marriage of partners in a way. You know, it's, it's got to be good for the buyer and the seller. And, and it is more difficult in this current environment to do deals. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can never stop looking. So, so you're kind of in the di- digestion phase, right? Right now, you did all of these acquisitions in a record period of time. Never heard of any company doing, especially one that size, doing that many acquisitions in that short a period of time, a little more than a year. Literally, you didn't stop moving. And now it's, okay, other opportunities, new strategies opened up, and now we're going to make the most of it. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And I think we did a heck of a job. And, and I don't know of any other company in the world. And you just said it. And I, I'd agree with you that, you know, we're able to buy, you know, eight, eight companies in a matter of 13 months. I think it's unheard of. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, we are extremely aggressive and we're extremely successful in the business plan. And now it's time to develop the assets that we, we acquired. And, you know, these things take time and it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it, it's, uh, it takes time to build a big company and, you know, you have to take a long term view on these things. And I do. Uh, um, uh, you know, I bought some stock just last week at, at uh, what I consider pretty cheap prices. And, you know, but I'm looking two, three, four, five years out when when I think the, the you know, the, the, the real benefits of the work we're going to do that we're doing today are going to really start to pay off. 
Yeah. So your other companies that you've been involved in building, uh, First Quantum and First Majestic, had to have been exciting. But is there something more exciting about this, what you're doing now? You know, I love building companies. So it's, it's uh, no, I wouldn't say uh, it's, it's, it's a more or less exciting. Uh, you know, my, my role at First Majestic is very much an administrator. Uh, uh, you know, it's a big company and, and, and uh, you know, we're, our acquisition strategy is quite a bit different than it would be for First uh, my, uh, Finance, for example. So, um, you know, we're, we're First Majestic is extremely focused on, on silver in Mexico, you know, which has limited opportunities because, you know, silver mines are pretty rare animals. So, sure. you know, the, the acquisitions uh, strategy there, as I said, is much different. So First Mining Finance has a much broader mandate. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, North and South America, and so it's Western Hemisphere based. So um, primarily gold, mind you, you know, we, we like gold a lot, but, you know, we'll look at copper projects. We'll look at, you know, other projects if, if they meet our criteria. So, you know, the, 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 the stuff that, uh, you know, we can look at at First Money Finance is, is, uh, is, is much broader, as I said. Sure. So the price of gold looked like it was going to break through 1300 It was having a great day. 14, 2015, and I got First Mining finance public in April of 2015 and set on a very aggressive uh, campaign of acquisitions. You know, my team of technical people uh, uh, um, reviewed, you know, many of the great assets that had been developed over the previous couple of decades owned by their mining companies that were in financial difficulty due to the collapse in the sector. And uh, we went on a campaign and bought eight companies in a period of about 13 or 14 months and uh, built up a portfolio of 25 projects, um, of which a good handful of them are in, you know, mining friendly Eastern Canada, Quebec and Ontario and Newfoundland um, contain, you know, somewhere around 13 you know, million ounces. Uh, um, but, you know, that's that's only 43 101 compliant ounces is actually what we think there's they're understated. And, uh, uh, you know, back in the days when I was putting together the portfolio, it was cheaper to buy ounces uh, than it would be to drill for an ounce. Well, that has now changed. It's now cheaper to drill for an ounce than to buy an ounce. And uh, we now can, you know, basically change the business strategy of First Mining Finance from just a buyer of assets and a holder of assets to an actual a developer of assets by drilling uh, uh, these projects out and, and defining additional ounces that we think exists and over time de-risking them by, you know, getting permits in place, by building roads and, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure and so on 